Hello everyone, Derek Stam Toys, and we are back with another action figure review. And today I am fairly excited because I finally complete my all white pinnacle gear set. As you guys can see, I'm, I'm sure you're not blind, and if you are, sorry, I hope you like listening. But I, I'm just very excited to finally have this duo in the collection as well because I've never owned. They're Mattel figures. Kind of weird that they have two different pictures of two different gears on the back. Not even the ones they're wearing in package. But whatever. Not unusual for AEW figurines, I guess you could say. But, yeah, you know, I'm just very pumped up about today. I thought about if I wanted to do this in, like, split reviews. Because I haven't had many reviews recently, but... I also kind of figured they're they're a tag team, you know. Why not just do the duo review? And don't mind the arena setup right now. I was technically in the middle of filming episode four for the upcoming episode of the Pick Fed. I wonder how you guys have been enjoying it lately. That one dude, he's been commenting a lot. I I can't exactly remember the name of his channel off of the top of my head. But he's been doing small little pick feds and stop motion videos on his channel to it. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about, whoever you, you are. I can't remember what your name is right now and I'm sorry about that. I think it was like JCW or something like that. If I got it correct, there you go. If not, maybe I'll edit like a comment of his up into the video or whatever. But he's been commenting a lot. Uh, I love to see the interaction, and if you guys want to, feel free to interact yourself, but before I keep rambling, because I see it's already two minutes deep, why don't I get these figures out of the packaging, and we can start getting into the review. I'll see you guys in a second. Alrighty, you guys, now that we finally got them out of their plastic prison, we can get into their accessories, which... They don't have many, thankfully. And then we'll get into the figures and the attires and rate them 1 out of 10, 1 out of 5 stars. You know the whole ordeal if you've been around since the beginning. Haven't really changed up my formula at all. I don't really think so, at least. But getting into Dax Harwood's accessories, because he's probably the most awkward one out of the two. He only comes with two head sculpts. They're not bad head sculpts by any means. I I would definitely say the Mattel has a better like face sculpt for Dax on their end when he was um what were they? I know they were the Revival, but I can't remember exactly what their names were off the top of my head. But yeah, I I don't know. I definitely like the screaming head sculpt way more compared to the just like casual, normal facial expressions. They both kind of look like Carl Anderson to me, if I'm going to be honest with you. That's what this head sculpt reminds me of. Like, this looks like an old man Carl Anderson with no teeth in his mouth. And then the other head sculpt just kind of looks like Carl Anderson not enjoying his beer too much. Him and Luke Gallows on their podcast just not having a good time that day, apparently. And then you've got this big bulky arm brace. I'd call this an elbow pad, but this will hinder every point of articulation in the arm. It is trash. Unless you're trying to play with the stiffest action figure arm in the world, I don't recommend you have that on if you do take them out of the package. But it does look like, it looks pretty alright if you're trying to act like he's Cody Rhodes and he's coming out with like a broken arm or something. Either way though, not the greatest elbow pad accessory, especially compared to the one that's also on the Dax Harwood figure. But moving on from him, now we've got Cash Wheeler. He comes with two different head sculpts and an extra set of hands. I left the fist hand sculpts in the figure as you can see there. But he also comes with two open hands and kind of like Dax Harwood he's got just like a normal I'm just chilling expression and then he's got a screaming head sculpt which at least with this one they included the teeth 
so he doesn't look like an old man getting ready to like gum his food but that's all right though you know it's whatever maybe down the line we'll get better dax hardwood head scopes and we can put them on to our older Dax Hardwood head sculpts because the AEW figures are way more interchangeable than Mattel could ever be. But with the action figure accessories out of the way, let's get into each one of these action figures, shall we? Alrighty, you guys, getting into the action figures now themselves. Now that they're out of the plastic prison, they both look pretty damn good, honestly. I don't really have too many complaints about these guys. If anything, maybe the torso choice is a little bit weird because they kind of look smaller compared to how they do on TV. But not the biggest ordeal. I, I wouldn't go home and cry about it once I got these figures realizing that maybe the... And he does not want to stand. Maybe realizing that, you know, they're not so proportionate. And I feel like I want to say My Damn Toys was also talking about how the, like, torso size isn't really the greatest here. As you can see, he's got his tattoo on his back. And he also does have one on his ribcage there. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit. There you go. I don't know what that says. I'm lucky I know the one on my hand means love. Anyway, all of the decal, like details and stuff like that with these figures, they, they look really good. And in all honesty, if you didn't want them to be like in pinnacle gear, and I do that with the uh, finger quotations, because literally the only thing that ties these figures to being pinnacle members is their knee pads so if you really wanted to you just swap out the knee pads and boom they're just simple FTR and white and purple gear and honestly I do kind of I do mess with that aspect of the figures I know that's also accurate to how they came out because not every member just had pinnacle plastered all over their gear and stuff but yeah no the these figures do look really good. The only thing that does like confuse me a little bit, and I do want to say it's accurate, but notice on how Dax Harwood just has like a little D on his trunks, <laughs> a little D, giggity. But then he also, uh, yeah, Cash Wheeler has Cash, like it's his whole first name. I can't remember exactly if that's accurate or not, but. If you know, tell me in the comments below, but I can't remember if it's accurate or not. Everything else, though, from my memory of watching the match, their, their gear is pretty spot on. You know, I can't really say I have too many complaints there. <clears throat> Even if it wasn't accurate, though, I do kind of wish that Cash Wheeler had white trimmed boots, like his partner over here, but... Then yet again, he also has white laces where he doesn't. So maybe that's also just an accuracy point there. But they both have FTR written on their ass cheeks. You, you know how the tight game goes. It's either they're plain or they've got a bunch of logos all over them. And there he goes again. He's falling. So I'm, I'm going to kind of just let him stay there and contemplate his decisions. Um... As far as everything else goes, you know, the head sculpts on each of these guys, they're, they're kind of hit or miss. I can't really say that the head sculpts were great choices by all means, and I do find it a little bit weird that one guy doesn't come with fist hands, the other one does, the other one doesn't even come with interchangeable hands at all over the other one just weird dynamics in the figure line for AEW like I, I've noticed on how like sometimes they'll include like a bunch of accessories with one figure and then half of the wave doesn't really get all that great of accessories if any at all so I, I don't know maybe that's just me and how I like interpret how they make the line but 
I don't know. It, it does remind me of early days Mattel, though, where you didn't get too many accessories and stuff like that. At least, if anything, now we just grow up in the era where our wrestling figures are coming with interchangeable hands and interchangeable head sculpts. And if you really wanted to, you could pop his torso on here, or vice versa. Not that I'm going to do that because everybody should know that these figures are very plug and play. If I wanted to, Dax Harwood could come out in Kenny Omega gear. But I, I don't think that really matters to you guys. And in all honesty, I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling on at this point now that I see it's 10 minutes. I'm going to try to wrap it up a little bit here. But I don't know. How, how do you guys feel of the, like about these figures? I don't, I don't know exactly what I want to rate them or what I like have to say as far as like a final say if anything though I should probably grab the rest of the pinnacle out and kind of just show off like how they look all next to each other so I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll get into the final like thoughts of the figures and how I'm gonna rate them Alrighty you guys, now that we've got them all set up, this is what they look like up next to all the other members in their white pinnacle gear. Of course the MJF, I put a extra accessory on him that's actually the JBL like little weird jacket that he had with his first elite. So I put that onto him and I think it actually works quite well. You guys would see him in that attire on episode 3 of Chaos Theory, the pick fed episode that just got released recently. But yeah, you know, I, I think they all look pretty nice up next to each other. Of course, all the purples in their gear weren't too accurate. And that's just kind of how they came out wearing it. That's nothing we can really do unless you want to, like, go out of your way to customize them that way. But... Yeah, you know, I think they look pretty well up next to each other. I I definitely say out of these two, Cash Wheeler is definitely the better figure out of the two. I would just say as far as it looks and feels in hand. The Dax Harwood is a little weird. I'd say he's still worth the price point, especially if you're trying to get a set of FTR for like your pick feds or whatever. The, this Dax Harwood definitely gonna do the job, you know? It's not the worst feeling figure in hand. The head sculpts are a little weird, but that's just whatever. And if anything, my only, like, true gripe with that figure would be the knee brace feels extremely large on that leg. Like, if I put it all the way up so it actually might stay in place it, it goes over the knee pad a little bit so it, it just looks a little weird but all in all these figures are really good figures sadly my phone's on five percent now so i really gotta hop out of this all in all i'm gonna give the cash wheeler a solid eight out of ten we'll go with a good four out of five yeah, 4 out of 5 stars sounds good. And then the Dax Harwood, I'm going to give him a 6.5. Just because the accessories are kind of lacking a little bit. And the accessories he does have, they're, they're a little wonky. Like, I can't just purely base this all off of how they feel in hand. They, they got to look the part too. And Cash Wheeler definitely looks the part in my opinion. His accessories are well worth it enough. He comes with an extra change of hands, comes with an extra head sculpt. His knee pads are really nice. They don't really hinder much articulation. And he just articulates pretty well overall. You know, kind of breaking down some of the articulation, you know, like look, he's got a really good ab crunch. Not a lot of their figures have good ab crunches. It, it, it feels buttery smooth to bend the elbow and to move the arms and stuff. It, you know, it doesn't feel terrible in hand. That's one thing I know I haven't done a whole lot is like break down the figures and stuff like that. But 
you know like and then here's that hardwoods ab crunch it they're both good figures they pose around really well I, I have no complaints there but all in all the accessories are just a, a little weak for me but on that note if you like the video like the video if you dislike the video feel free to leave a dislike you ain't gonna hurt my feelings if you guys have been liking the pick fed episodes feel free to interact and comment do whatever you need to do on those and I also do have a pick fed playlist if you guys are interested in watching some of the other episodes but you don't exactly know where to start I have it all in order and hopefully one of these days I want to remaster the first episode because the first episode is blocked on the channel I can't just get it to casually change I gotta redo it and with that it's gonna take me some time I started it though so let's hope that comes out before the end of the year but yeah I, on that note I think that's where I'm going to head out. If you guys want to follow me on any social media, links are in the description below. And I am out of here. Peace out, you guys.